or it's time for a brief history of CSS resets. So CSS resets were first thought of a little over 10 years ago as a solution to a problem at the time. And the problem is that not every browser displays everything consistently with the other browsers. So a page that you open in Chrome is going to look a little bit different than the same page that you open in Firefox. Maybe Firefox displays uh, margins a little bit differently or padding on some elements. On some elements, it changes the font size a little bit. So CSS resets aim to correct all that and implement the same styles for every browser. So the first resets, the most popular probably being Eric Meyer's reset, just completely deleted all the styles. So it, it set everything to the same font size. As you can see, there's no, there's no list items right here. There's no bullet points. And there's basically no styles compared to the browser default right here. And so of course, this is going to look a lot more consistent across different browsers because it's setting all the padding, all the margin, all the font size on all of the different elements to zero, basically. And so you can then go and style each one as you'd like, and it will, in theory, appear consistent across every browser. Now, as you can probably guess, this is not really used that much anymore because most people don't want to go through and manually set every single heading, every single size for every heading. That can take a while. You probably don't want to do that. So what's more popular now are CSS normalizes. And this is more what people think of when they talk about CSS resets these days. So the most popular is probably normalize. And this doesn't just re reset everything to default like the Maya reset does. What it does is kind of set everything to a reasonable default. So it, fi it fixes the inconsistencies between the H1 sizes. In Firefox, maybe it's a couple of pixels off. So it, it makes that all the same. It corrects all the margins so that they're all the same, but it doesn't reset them completely. And the same, of course, with other similar CSS resets like Sanitize. There's not that much of a difference between all of these, but some of them have different opinions on what styles should be there and what styles shouldn't. As was a big help 10 years ago because browsers were a lot more inconsistent than they are now. Of course, with Internet Explorer, uh, Normalize also fixed a lot of the bugs that Internet Explorer had that just did not display things correctly. But nowadays, modern browsers are a lot more consistent. Of course, there's still going to be some differences between browsers, but do you really still need a CSS reset in 2021 or whenever you're watching this? So like I said, a lot of the fixes that are in these is just fixes to Internet Explorer. So if we look through Normalize CSS, through all of this, a lot of this is just fixing some bugs in Internet Explorer, and this is another fix for IE10, and you can go on, and honestly, a lot of these are just Internet Explorer fixes. And so if you don't really support Internet Explorer with your modern websites, then you don't really need a lot of these rules. So I personally don't support Internet Explorer anymore, because honestly, even Microsoft is dropping support for Internet Explorer. I have a whole other video on that if you want to see my reasons for why I don't support IE anymore. But that's just one use case for these CSS resets that I just don't need anymore. And honestly, if I'm just working on a small website, it doesn't really bother me that much if the headings are a couple of pixels off in Firefox than they are in Chrome, or if the margins are a little bit different. If it's really important to me that something looks right, then you can just set it explicitly and I don't really need, see the need to bring in this entire style sheet just to fix a couple of small issues that I might have. Because of course, this is not very big. This is probably going to be, this is only six kilobytes uncompressed, which is not really that big in the long run. But if I'm already using a very small style sheet that's only a couple of kilobytes long, then I don't really see the need to bring in a whole separate style sheet for no reason. Even worse is if you bring it in from a third party website, which you don't really need more requests going on in your page. I just like to keep things simple and only import one style sheet for most of my websites. But of course, there are times that you need to be really pixel perfect with the design. Say you have a client that has some designs ready and they want it to be absolutely pixel perfect. Even in those cases, a CSS reset is not really going to help you that much. Because whenever I make a website like that, I want to be explicit about all the styles anyway. So if I'm setting up a button, I'm going to completely override the default styles for that. So the margin, the font size, and everything. So to have a whole separate style sheet to reset the styles, for me then to just go and overwrite those again 
it doesn't really make sense for me to have a CSS reset in here. Another thing is that a CSS reset doesn't really save you from having to go and check other browsers anyway. So when you're building a website, you want to check it on as many browsers and as many devices as you possibly can because things are going to look different, they're going to work different in different browsers, on different devices, and so you still need to go through and check to actually make sure that it's working in Safari and every other browser that you want to support. And a CSS reset is not going to fix every problem for you. It's not going to be a cure-all. So you do still need to go and actually test it on actual devices. And CSS reset is not going to save you from that. So I personally do not use CSS resets in any of my projects anymore. The best that I will do is take a few base styles that I, I like to have for every single website and keep it as a snippet. And then whenever I'm creating a new CSS file, I just paste in a few defaults that I like. For instance, I do like this body margin zero because I never see the need for having margin on my body. I always end up sending it to zero anyway. So that can go in my snippet right there. And I do like having, in sanitize, I do like having this line height 1.5. That's a useful default for me at least. And I do like having this uh, box sizing border box to all elements. It just saves some headaches down the road. So if you do like a lot of these basic stylings, you can just copy a few of the ones that you actually like, and you don't have to keep all the other ones that you're probably never going to use. For instance, why would I use this tab size property right here? I don't have any tabs in my website, so it doesn't really make sense for me to have a useless property that I wouldn't actually use. And I just like to be in control of all my CSS. I just like to know everything that's going on. And when you write all of your CSS yourself, then you're going to know what's going on inside your CSS. That just gives me more control over my own CSS. So what I would recommend doing is if you have some defaults that you like, say like I said, then I would just copy those to a snippet file or something. I recently made a video showing you how to set snippets, set custom snippets in VS Code. So you can check that out if you use Visual Studio Code. But I would just paste all those in there. And then whenever you start a new project, just paste that in there, get all set up, and then write the rest from there. That's the easiest way i found to do it. And I just don't think CSS resets are as useful as they were 10 or 15 years ago.